So let's jump in. C4 with white. Okay. I think we'll still be able to, uh, yeah, we'll still be able to get our setup here, more or less. here now I would play queen takes but I'm sure that he's just gonna play that so that's basically the only reason I'm gonna take with the bishop here I can set up the battery this way okay now wait a minute don't I want to open up this diagonal. This is what I'm interested in. Like, pick his pocket, get out. Bishop f6, I think it might be time to take that. Don't be taken back, bud. Don't be doing that. Now the rook will be lost unless you move the knight, but that's a quick KO to start off. Now obviously, uh, when I'm playing this series, not every game starts with e4. When people play d4, I've been playing f5. I'm playing the Dutch, but e4 will always go c5. Next move, pretty much going to be e6, and as soon as we see d4, it's takes. It's knight c6. Queen c7, um, now we're going to take the b5 square, only after we move the queen though. I know it seems counterintuitive, but we want the queen here to defend the knight. b5, and bishop b7. Remember our goal in this opening is to develop the queen side. Seems counterintuitive, but all the queen side pieces. And when I see f4, and the bishop's not defended, could be f3 as well. That's the signal to play bishop c5. Knight c6, bishop takes, would work out. And well, this move is just a game losing blunder. e4 is just very reactionary, right? Trying to, uh, trying to hit the bishop and you know, the game's already over. So the question is how we're gonna continue here. Queen e3 check, forces rook f2. So that looks like a good start. Now knight f6. And if e5, knight e4 threatens both. Should be getting close to gg here. Knight g4 forces this. There's also bishop takes e4. Yeah, let's make sure to win our material here. Very unpleasant position, but I mean, it's off the back of a huge blunder here, b4. This move, uh, I would say for it to be played, and it's a good move, probably probably have to be pretty advanced to know when to do that. I think it's a capture angle. Bishop takes, I'll start by taking this. Queen takes a6, I'll probably just castle. All about getting castled here. Queen takes, we'll trade and, and go there, and well, here we'll just be checkmate after rook c1. Queen 
queen b6. It's a reasonably tricky move. You know? I, I think he's dead, so he's trying the only thing he knows how. And it's, you know, it's not crazy. Let's say I'm so addicted to Smother's mate here, Smothered mate, that I do this, knight f2. He's covering it. Okay, you know, I see, I see what you're doing, bud. Johnny Cola, would you have fallen for it? That's what I'm saying. Let's say someone does this and you're like so addicted to Smothered Mate, you try to do it and he actually wins the game. So it's not, it's not crazy, right? I think it's a reasonable move by him, right? This is double check. In H1, he's getting excited now because this is exactly what he wanted with this Queen B6 move. He has to move his king. Maybe he's slowly realizing that. <laughs> he might be trying to do this. Because he did this move in order to take the queen. So when he saw this, he's probably like, wait a minute. What's going on here? But after king h1, we'll play rook down to c1, and that way we still get our smothered maiden. And we end up winning the game on time. God. We're just a time player. Even though it looked like he prevented our smothered mate, we were going to go here. King h1. Rook here. And we were going to get it anyway. Can't have him stealing our thunder. GG. So. Imanov should be very familiar now. C5, of course. C6. We always take. C3 is a different story. But without the C-pawn involved, when they play D4, always take. The knight goes first, the queen goes next. It seems like the pawn should go next to stop this before you put your queen there, but then if they take and we take, we're basically playing the same line as this, except after this move, we played a6, which is not a great move. It's okay for black, but it's not, not very good. So start with the queen, then take away the knight, b5 follows up, bishop b7, rook c8, so we're prioritizing the queen side pieces first. And as soon as the f pawn moves, f3 or f4, I always bring the bishop out. Because now, it doesn't matter where this knight moves, right, I, I'm hitting the bishop with check. And if white plays a move like, I don't know, like uh, bishop f3, uh, bishop f3 even kind of stops it. But I've seen people blunder here, like, kind of think. E5, maybe, H3, basically a move that doesn't allow Rook D1 to happen, right? Because my next move will be Queen B6, and I'm actually winning a piece here. If he moved his Bishop, he'd have Knight E2. If he moved his Queen, he'd have Rook D1. If he moved the King, then he would be able to take, but a lot of times people just blunder an entire piece there. So b4 is very bad, yeah. We just take, and obviously the knight's hanging at the end. But if white had played more normal, queen d2, I would have continued, queen b6, rook d1 to guard it, and probably would have just developed like this. Not to f6, because of uh, e5, but to e7, and you know, the plan is maybe to trade everything here, and and play from, from there. GG. That was a pretty instructive one, I think. It, it does remind of, of that game, Trolley Dero, that's right. <clears throat> Are you talking about in the opening, Donwa? Because the thing is, I just haven't, um, I haven't gotten that in a game yet. I would lo I'd love to like, if one person would just play this, then I could really explain what to do. But for now, all you need to know is just bring your queen back and then play a6 and kick the knight right out again. 
But yeah, no one's played it against me. I would love to like have someone play it and then I could explain it. But the point is, yeah, just move your queen and then it's almost going to be the exact same position after a6. Like if someone goes here and they go back, guess what? If you put your queen back on c7, it's completely transposed, just so you know. Okay. Well, d4 and c3, again, the usual answer. Not accepting it, that's for sure. <clears throat> Knight c6, bishop c4, so... Like, immediately going for... f7. So I wonder if there's time to do this, because... Yeah, this move seems kind of weird. I, I think we can actually play... Kind of like a Taimanov setup. This doesn't look so bad. I would often go for a different setup against this Mora. Smith Mora declined, I guess. Uh, but yeah, with a closed C file, our, our queen is pretty comfortable here. Give me that center pawn, I'm going to take it. Gonna take it. Okay. That's a weird move because I mean that's a free tempo. Thank you very much. Seems to be offering uh free moves all over the place here. What am I missing? Alright. Bishop here. Bishop here, we'll just play d6. There's ideas like uh, e5 now that he needs to be very, very mindful of. e6 definitely wins material. So, or sorry, e5. So knight h5 is a good move, very good move. Um, but e5 is available. If queen takes g7, I have both of these available rook moves. And then just take one of the center, um, one of the center pieces. So I think I'm gonna do it this way. Knight h5. I think I take e5, queen g3, queen g7. Not sure if I like that more than this. It's hard to say. So here, queen takes, and then that's actually still a threat. So I was thinking this. I was thinking this was the move. Okay, now maybe get out of the in. I think that's a useful move for me because it just, yeah, I can trade, you know, it helps me out a little bit. Bring all the pieces over, nice and safe. Take this. Queen uh, g4 if queen f4, and that'll trade the queens. That's what we need. That's what we need. Hmm. Not allowing the queens to get traded. Annoying. Probably this. been up a piece for a while but 
you know, it's never been truly easy because King's kind of out to lunch. Oh, my queen, damn it. We've been getting uh, these night checkmates all damn day. Surely I can't keep getting away with it. We'll go C4. C6 does, uh, I mean, it's not the worst, but it's not exactly a time out of. So this this is uh this is looking pretty decent for me here. Honestly, D4 is definitely the best move here. We can leave the deep on back, but it should be here. If he's gonna not take the center, we gotta get in there. B5, all right, so he's offering me a pawn here. Can I truly take it though? The answer might be yes. Like, I think I can win the pawn. Taking with the bishop and then the knight, but queen a5, knight c3, rook c8, b4. It definitely works. No question about that. But is that the move I'd like to do? I'm principled. Gotta take a free pawn. Gotta take a free pawn. Unpinning myself. Yes, it's tempting a sack, but I'm gonna have the rook unleashed as well. And the good thing for me is that if we see a sacrifice, the worst, worst case is that he wins the piece back. And then it's just going to be even. Get out of the uh, in. Also, keeping my queen here instead of there because I'm, I'd like to stop knight e4. Ooh, a frisky, frisky move there. I don't think that it works. I think this works out. Just realized, yeah, it is 1555 against 1555. Only one can remain. I think we're winning a piece here. This looks reliable. Time to get behind this pass pawn. Push him, baby. Mm -hmm. 
That's for the boogie. Icarus, thanks for the kick, Cinco. You're feeling the boogie? Covering that square. Can't hide from the boogie. Okay, it was really all the free pawn, but we got our timeout off set up here, but not too much. This was, uh, c6 is kind of tough to get a Sicilian because you never want to take because they can take back and open the c file. That's why it's annoying. All right, it's back to c5. Oh, c3. So we're definitely going to attack this pawn. We must. Ooh, fancy. Don't get uh, stressed here. If you take, you're going to lose your knight. That's okay, that's okay. Remember that e6 is something that we would normally have in our setup, so it's fine, totally fine to play it now. Oh, something is... Something is going down here, right? Oh, that might have been the worst one to lose. He wants rook to b3. This was an Alapin, yep. Yep, C3 Sicilian. C3 moved two in this game. Okay, let's go here so we don't let him castle. I think uh, we are the most annoying person here. Bishop d7, Lolly? Bishop d7, Rook b3? I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Let's go here. I don't mind taking this. Again, still not letting him castle. Can we really prevent him the entire game? I'm gonna try it. No, we're, we're not gonna let him castle. We can't let him have that moment. We can't let him have that moment. He's going to enjoy it too much. Check. Sorry, bud. Okay, knight takes e3, pawn takes, bishop check, rook c2, probably many things here, but that's good enough. This also exists. I think this is actually worse for him. To lose the rook rather than lose the queen for a rook, because he's he's still in trouble here. Like, now there's rook c2 threatened, plus all the pawns are falling. Okay. 
GG. Tell you, this Sicilian stuff, it's been working out really well. So here's the thing, if someone plays knight here, you would go e6, right? And then after c3, you would go here. So obviously it makes sense if someone plays c3 first. Even if it looks like surprising, like knight f3, catching you off guard, just play e6, it's fine. You'll get right back into that same stuff that, uh, that you've been playing, like the exact same variation. Yeah, you'll play knight d7, trade, b6, bishop b7, that'll be your setup. In this line. h6, castle, maybe knight f6. I think it's a pretty good, pretty good setup here. Yeah, the ones that are more like the timeout of are these ones. These positions are a little more familiar. I think I will take with a deep on here. And we can develop like this. A5 truly doesn't make a threat, but I will still oblige and go here. Threatening this pawn. We'll threaten it again with knight f3. This guy's defended. Black will probably try to go here and f6. Okay. Totally offering me the pawn here. Also, rook d1 looks quite good. Should be two and castle, I think. Also, bishop f3. Here we go. These knights are very clumsy, honestly. They look, uh, they look good, but they are clumsy. Holy smokes! Bishop to h3. Like, after I take, and he takes, let's say it was his turn one more time. What would his move be? I don't even know. This move is wild. There's not even a semblance of a threat here. He's got one piece over there. That's it. So, I'll tell you one thing, queen f5 is fancy, and immediately trades the queens from what I can see. So that move is definitely standing out to me. But I'd rather handle this in a more like, I'll fall for it way. Like, okay, alright, you, you've done what you wanted to do, you got your bishop there. What, truly, what is happening next? I'd like to know. This check is about to happen, rook here. I am gonna mate you thanks to your move. <laughs> this guy's hanging, this guy's hanging. It's like, feels like everything's loose. I'm not even that interested in taking the, uh, in taking the material there. Let's go here. Forget about that knight. I don't care about it. It doesn't help me. Rook g1 for sure. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. We're going crazy with the night today. Going crazy with the night. It's continuing. Not even at 1600 yet. These are some satisfying checkmates. Ooh, an early, very early Bishop F5. Ain't that annoying. I'll play D3. I'd like to put my queen there, so may as well. I'm never going to take, and I would love if uh, Black took on C4. Ooh, I like this move. Now we're back in the uh, Taimanov sphere. Okay. Chip takes here. Queen B2 to maybe hit that guy. giving me a pawn and you're giving me the bishop pair. I can only say thank you. You know, this move looks very desperate, shall we say. Here, here. I mean, we should really play d4. I want to keep everything like nice and defended. I don't like this because of queen a5. Let's do this. Threatens this pawn. There we go. Solidify everything. Okay, that's right. We need a knight. Somehow we need a knight on the board here to do our, our bidding. Recycling the rook like this. I have rook takes b5, but positions like this, my threats are never going to go away. Whoa. That's a funky move, buddy. I respect you for it. I like it. I'm not going to take it. I don't, I don't trust that position. I think it's a cool move. I mean, I could take and go f3, but I still think it... Um... Gives him some chances there. Always sack the exchange. Well, this guy knows. What is the key to victory? I think this move. I think that'll be too much, yeah. 
That'll be too much. Was the Rook H6? There was. But was there an opportunity to promote to one, two, three, four, five, six more bishops? Also, yes. It's not my fault that he resigned. This was our last game before 1600. Can you blame me? Wanted to have a little fun. We've been uh, killing it with knights all day, so it'd be only fitting that I go promote to a knight and come up with a check. You wanted to see a pawn mate? I thought you wanted to see a knight mate. We've been getting knight mates all day. All right, we're at 1600 in the timeout off now. C4 has, I can't say it's been yielding as many timeout off positions as before, but you still see the ideas. But with black, it's starting to get quite comfortable. 